Welcome, everybody, to Haunters Talk Podcast. It's my first time doing an intro, and we're with your ghost host, Anthony. And we also have me, Mike, a.k.a. Sparrow. And we also have Justin, a.k.a. Cavities. Is that well, my new nickname? We're just going to roll and see which one sticks. I like that I kinda one. Dig it. I kind of dig it. I dig it. <laughs> yeah. Ghost host, man. I like that. <laughs> That's cool, man. I was off. The, look at that. See, you did a good job. You did a really good job. Boys, it is finally done. About 25% <laughs> of our questions were answered. The other 75% are still out there in the MCU somewhere. WandaVision has come to a series finale. Mm-hmm. Let's open up the floor, first of all. What was everyone's... Uh, thoughts let's go positive first before we get into the negative but what were some positive thoughts you had about the finale of wandavision mm. i mean listen no, we act- justin because you just you're fresh with it so I do so. so watch like later i just finished watching it as you guys could see um i definitely like the fact that when well vision against white vision Right there when they put up the the boat of the the boat fuck I can't even say that word but you know what I'm talking about that one boat that they were talking about yeah the boat uh, was right uh, there when thesis. yeah there you go when I was going into that I was like oh shit that's actually kind of true and it kind of stumped on uh, white vision and he goes so then what are and then when he releases like the memories that were locked up he goes I'm vision and just like storms off. That I thought was pretty cool, but from there, that's when I started getting sad again. Yes, yes, it did. Mike, what you got, man? Um, and Wanda kind of so like most of her abilities. I mean, I'm I'm taking this as like a whole because I think that's the best way to 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 do this. Um, as a whole, like, and for us being brand new to this whole experiment, like, I thought it was a cool ride. You know, in the very beginning, kind of like going up and down, there was mysteries everywhere. Right. Um, still mysteries going on. A lot of people are saying that it's going to be like this was just only one season, but I have a feeling that it might lead to a second season. Um, well, I can tell the, you right now, the director said there's no plans for a second season. I don't know, man. Yeah. Like, I mean, like it it broke the internet four times. So yeah. I think uh, – I think they got enough sauce in the the tank to do it again. I got a WandaVision story you guys are going to want to hear. You're going to laugh your asses off. But go ahead, Mike, continue. Um, But, I mean, you know, like, I'm really trying to not be a toxic fan because what I notice is, like, I've I've been getting in the characteristics of being a toxic fan. And I'm like, man, I want to get myself back to loving this instead of if something doesn't happen, I get mad or whatever. Or, like... if it doesn't happen the way somebody else writes it or something like that or whatever, or somebody else give, gives a rumor in there. Am I bummed that some things didn't happen? A little bit. Yeah. But I mean, as far as like a show as, as a whole, like I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was like, it hit the heart out of like most um, Marvel films. Like it really kind of like dug deep. And for me, it was just more of like a, I don't really know if there has been another Marvel movie that has done like a love story so Shakespearean right. than, than WandaVision. So, I mean, I'm, I'm giving it that credit where, where it deserves. I will say this, man. Uh, this has been, uh, and I said it on the live show, I was just part of right now because I've been talking about it with them for all nine weeks um this has been the most fun i've ever had uh with any mcu project um because this was one of those shows week after week that would keep you on your keep you on your toes and have you thinking man like what if this character is going to show up what if this you know so like and it had all these speculations all these fan theories rumors you know everything leading up to the season finale, like you know, there was just so much going. It was a roller coaster of events. People were having their own puzzle pieces, puzzling, putting the puzzle together. You know, one piece may not w- be going where it should go, but then we put it there anyway because we feel like it's going to go in that direction. Um, 
it was just a fun time, man. I, I never had this much fun with a bunch of friends talking about the show and what they thought about it, their theories, all that fun stuff. So I had a fun time overall every week just doing this. Uh, in the last episode, I mean, okay, maybe I, I, I think as far as unanswered questions go and all that, you know, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be talked about with this, you know, all these questions and everything that need to be answered still. But overall, I think it was just a, a good but sad ending with Wanda. I mean, I really, you really felt for her there, man. I mean, there was a lot of parts where it just kind of hit you really hard, you know, man. And I, I really did like the writing aspect in that and in in those parts, you know, because they can go from a ro a romance to a comedy to a action film to a, like a ser serious thriller mystery. They did all that in this, man. They can, they really know how to like go back and forth and it didn't help i mean it helped them more that the director actually has been in a bunch of different sitcoms and everything so he knew exactly what style uh, kevin Feige was looking for um uh, another fun fact that i found interesting about this show too is usually with shows they have multiple directors each episode they had one director all for this one they're gonna have one director for falcon winter soldier and they're having one director for loki and then they said in future projects they they're gonna start doing like two or three directors that have the same vision. So I thought that was kind of interesting because usually shows, you know, they get different directors every episode. So. Well, I figured as much because if you think about it as like a whole, like the the whole series was like nine hours. Right. So. Yeah. You know. That had been crammed into three movies. Right. Yeah. So it's like three movies, one director. It kind of makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That kind of way. So I'm. I really can't wait to see what the future holds. There's a couple of setups we got in this, and we'll get to that soon. But, man, the showdown between the Visions, I have to say, was some of my favorite parts in this uh, episode. This is something I definitely wanted with WandaVision versus uh, Spectrum Vision. This was freaking dope. And not to mention, he just came off as scary in the beginning, man. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah, I was when I first saw him, you were like, "All right, maybe there's a little bit of hope he's gonna be good." And then all of a sudden, he's just, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, "Oh, she's gonna either blast him, and then, or, uh, fucking that purple chick was gonna hit her." And yeah. then all of a sudden, you just vision just pops up. Kind of Marvel expected right there, though. Right. I totally thought like when he was uh, holding her face, because hmm. I was like, they don't really explain the crown and everything. But, like, I thought, like, he was going to, like, almost crack the side of her heads, and that's, like, kind of the real reason why Wanda wears, like, her headpiece crown to, like, protect her from now on. But um, that was just, like, my own, like, mini little theories things. But for me, it got that, like, really cool, um, what is it, Terminator vibe when he was, like, all whiteness and stuff, and, like, in the weirdness of, like, the, the white with, like, the blue eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. was kind of, like, badass and cool. That was really cool. Yeah. And then right after uh, Vision, original Vision, uh, releases the back the blocked memories, his eyes revert back to like normal looking, almost human like eyes. So this begs the question on that aspect. Obviously, after that happens, he just takes off. He's like deuces. Mm -hmm. I ain't dealing with this anymore. Um, you think we're gonna get another? Captain America Bucky storyline between Wanda and Vision where she's just going to be trying to search for him I think the way he I think he's kind of like um, going where he left off and I think he's going back to Wakanda so you think Black Panther 2 maybe will be the next time we may see him huh but I, I think he's going to be working with Shiri in, in Wakanda and like you know helping the technology in the the Dude, town. Dude, what if they did that where like they made like a robotic Black Panther to kind of honor so that they technically didn't recast him but they like made something similar to him. I've been hearing Michael it, B. Jordan it, too possibly. It like it seems like he's got a lot of obviously like a lot of internal thinking to do. Yeah. And obviously like he doesn't really I mean I he has some liking to Wanda but I don't I think that it's going to be one of those like they won't like each other now, but it might be like something to work on like later, and it might snap, you know, like later on. So, um, 
I'm also curious now too. Where does it's another unanswered question, really? Where does how did Hayward ultimately design? What is he made out of? What's in his forehead that's shooting out all this? You know, the kind of same laser that Vision would, but with these with the stone. What what is you, his new Vision made out of? I believe it. Well, I want to say is it's still the original body of Vision, right? Not like fully more like a redesign of him like remolded so they use most of his body parts try to put them back together because they kept the original body wanted right. to take them it was a projection of the soul stone that was a piece of her so i want to say it's still vision because if you ask vision well ask vision fucking, i'm out of it i had to drive all the way to poway honda and come back if you don't know where poway honda is from carson it's past san diego so that was about a three-hour drive there and back. So I'm a little out of it. Um, and that's uh, that's so, the uh, the Justin trauma trauma hour. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so red vision. Uh, talking to white vision, he was saying you're you have the back to memory. So it's like he, he still had basically like the hard drive in his head of vision. So when he released it, it was just all those memories coming back, and now he's just like how Sparrow was saying, he's like, has that inner turmoil because he's putting all the pieces back together right now, trying to find out what's happening. And I don't know if you noticed when White Vision was talking before the memories released, he had a robotic tone to his voice. Yeah. Yeah, like the little vibration, like if you put your mic, your phone up, or you speak through like one of those voice changers, he has mm -hmm. like the little vibration in your tone. After the memories I was, released. I was listening intently because I was hoping that Anthony's, uh, <laughs> James Spader. Yeah, his. Uh, I was hoping his too, man. And we happen. got no Spader at all, and I was like, "Fuck." Because yeah, it, it didn't happen, really but I was just like, "Man, that would have been cool, though." <laughs> yeah, because as soon as they re he releases the memories, his voice goes back to uh, Vision's original voice, where it wasn't as ro well wasn't robotic at all, and then from there, that's when he shoots up. Yeah. Um. There's a couple, I mean, even before this ninth episode, though, there's a couple of things I still need cleared up. Um, there's one scene where they show security cam footage of Wanda breaking into sword and taking Vision's body. But when we see it through the memory of Wanda, it didn't go exactly like that. She broke the window, jumped down to see if he was still alive, and then nothing except it wasn't nothing i don't think so and i think that's how she built vision if you pay attention closely this is a fan theory i watched if you pay attention closely in that scene when she puts her hand over vision's forehead you see some energy coming out into her hand it's going up instead of going down so i think there was somewhat of vision's mind in there even though he was technically shut down um that's how she probably built that vision from her memories on top of what she knows you know so if you were paying i don't know if you paid attention to this so ray as soon as they arrest the fbi agent yeah. where they detain him and he was saying oh what what are your what's your plans with vision he goes well after we bring down the dome the hex once we uh annihilate wanda we're gonna bring vision as if she brought him back so the altered video would made it look like she stole Vision and used her powers to bring him back. So that was what. So that was probably like where he was. Why he altered it to already bring that. But so I he think had this that plan. That's trippy, dude. Wow. Because yeah, if you notice, he was already like he was cynical from the beginning. Here he had everything what he wanted, and then. From there, once she came out and said Vision was alive, he showed her video because it doesn't really pertain to say how long she was in there, did it? Or because it didn't say how long uh, what's her name was inside there before she got ejected out. Yeah. Correct. No. Yeah. So, <clears throat> how long does it take to alter video footage? Not very. With long. their, with them, probably not very long. Are you so, talking about how long she was in Sword headquarters? No, how long she was inside the hex. Um, oh. 
I for, keep forgetting her name. I think it, it was, was a, it was a, a week Wanda. and a half, right? Monica. Like two weeks. Monica. Oh, uh, how long Monica was inside the hex before she got ejected out? Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know how time ran in the hex, honestly. Like, mm-hmm. I was going episode by episode, and that's what it seemed like it was doing. But this seemed like also it was going on for like the first couple episodes were one continuous night. And then, like, it started going, like, day by day, maybe? I, I don't know. Like, there's at some point, it just kind of got confusing time-wise for me. So, mm-hmm. what about, um, I think one of the s- such amazing uh, kind of nods to Doctor Strange was, of course, when she's having that battle in the, uh, with, with Agatha the entire episode, really, um, more notably, when we go back to um, what is it, Salem, uh, mm-hmm. and she's trying to, she's using the, of course, the little mind trick she used to do in Age of Ultron, which she she did all the Avengers. Uh, we still to this day never saw what Hulk saw, so um, I would like to know that nightmare for Hulk. Um, Being cradled, probably. Being called Bruce, um, but yeah, she did the whole thing and and. It looks like Agatha at one point was stronger than her because she reversed the whole mind control to like go against her. Uh, it was just a trippy back and forth battle between the two because, you know, obviously you have uh, uh, Agatha who's been doing this for for hundreds of years, and then you got, you know, Scarlet Witch here who's only been doing this really for only a few years, but she's eventually like more powerful than agnes by the end so that's just it was nuts to me to to learn more about like how they're explaining the scarlet witch and everything which is really cool uh part of the whole chaos magic i think that that's really uh interesting that they were kind of breaking it down a new way and how she's kind of always had the power since the beginning we kind of saw that more in the kind of origin story of wanda maximoff episode where when she when the bomb didn't go off they're saying that uh, agatha was saying that it was her that stopped it from ticking and all that. So, I, I, because they, they said she did a probability hex. Yeah. So she was seeing if it was a dud or not. Yeah. And uh, it's just been interesting to see her grow up to be who she is now, um, and kind of go through the stuff she's gone through from Age of Ultron all the way to now. You know, losing Vision three times, losing freaking. Um, what's his name Pietro man like you know just every if you really notice everything that Wanda is in there's always something bad that happens so were they setting that up from the start because Age of Ultron she lost her brother and Sokovia went down um the next time we saw her was what Civil War I mean I think they I think to unfortunately use her character as like a martyr for a lot of things to to pop out i mean when we were at uh age of was it age of ultron with uh when she killed off uh rumla or crossbones in like a chaos circle Civil war <laughs> yeah um she like threw him in the air and then she blew him up in a in a bomb yeah <laughs> and he died in his own jelly yep <laughs> um like I, I think unfortunately like with her being the Scarlet Witch was they used her as like a martyr for a whole bunch of crap that's going on. And I feel like the future of her or whatnot, like she's now obviously metamorphosized and like pretty much like a badass bitch, if I can say that. You know, where it's like I don't think I mean obviously she's lost her kids. She's lost her her uh, husband not once but three times like she's lost like obviously she's not with the Avengers right now because she's taking a hiatus she's like no I don't want to be a hero because I did some things um I think that like she's now on her superhero dumb like of leveling up powering up to like the next level and being like all right now I got to read this book now I got to read more books and now I got to talk to the homeboy Dr. Strange to learn more stuff, you know, like I, I got that part of the whole entire WandaVision. So like to me, I mean, in the very beginning I was like, Oh, so we went through all this crap so that she can get a new costume. But like when I thought about it as a whole, I was like, 
we went through psychological uh, uh, tournament, you know, that went on for years. Uh, but believe she was she was brought in six years ago. Age right? of Ultron came out in two thousand fifteen. So a little more than that. <laughs> what happened? A little bit more than that, right? More than six years ago. No, nah, six is right about okay. 2015, 15, six is five, it. 20 okay. plus one, six. Um, but I feel Smart that, like, um, <laughs> I feel that, like, she's been around for a very long time and right. has yet to get her due. Um, unfortunately, she skipped uh, over Black Widow, but um, I'm, I, I believe there's a reason why. They're saving Black Widow because there's important information in that film that we need to know. <laughs> like, and they're like, we we need to have people pay for this <laughs> to, to to know about that information. I mean, there was a lot of information given in WandaVision where I felt like that can easily be a we should had should have had people pay for this. Um, but I, I I feel that like which we technically did. <laughs> if it was, I mean, I'm I'm not. Like once again, I'm trying not to be like negative about it, but like, right. if it was to lead to this area, they should have just gave all the episodes in the very beginning, it made it bingeable. Yeah, uh, I think it was from what I heard the director. I mean, like he said, he was just finishing up the last episode like three weeks ago. Um, so I don't know how they. I think because this was the first like MCU Disney Plus show, so they're probably trying to still figure out the kinks of okay i feel like because we were spoiled like i I don't think uh i don't think cavities came in this part of the conversation because he was gone um in the very beginning when we were talking about it but i think because we were spoiled with uh mandalorian season two ending that like we're like okay everything on disney plus is gonna have you know some amazing crazy like something going on yeah when it didn't happen it was just like Okay, you know. Okay, like, you know, like when we, and obviously, Cavities just saw the uh, the final post credit scene. But it was just like astral projecting but, and reading the book. To me, it didn't feel like there was something like I don't feel like it should have ended an episode ago, right? With because. When they did that in credit scene with uh, White Vision, that was the most me and uh, Bree got excited for. Because I was just like, okay, cool. They should have left it on that one. But, I mean, it was it was a cool, interesting ride, you know? It was. I, I really think, I mean, I was talking to my buddies about that, and we brought up Mandalorian Season 2. I think with like Mandalorian, I th- I think what was a good ride for me on this one was because Mandalorian season two, it's like okay, you kind of knew how every episode was gonna play out, and you knew exactly, uh, pretty much like the the kind of how do I put it, like the ingredients to each episode. Like it starts with them in space on the spaceship, then they something happens where they gotta go visit somebody, and then you know they do their their heist of some sort or action scene he makes a deal with them for gas or supplies or fixing a ship or something and then on to the next planet like that is the basic formula of the mandalorian i'm not and saying then, what was it every other episode oh here's some fan service here's this person yeah here's I, and i'm not saying like i'm hating on it because i'm not hating on it at all i, I think the, the show's fucking fantastic it's anything's better than the new trilogy to be honest um but i i really think that the show is fantastic and but it, it's one thing where they kind of already would announce like the episode before. Okay, we're gonna go here to go see this person, and you're like, okay, well, I know where the next episode's going. With WandaVision, I, with me every week, it was like, fuck, who's coming next? What's gonna happen next? How? What? They just did that like nothing. Like, well, who's this? Who's that? You know, like I always had at least five questions at the end of the episode. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Um, right. I had I had no idea where this was gonna go until like the final three episodes. I started getting the idea of like, okay, now they're setting up the major fight, and now we're gonna get a lot of backstory, and then what's gonna lead to like just the family duking it out. Um, 
but I did not expect White Vision. That was like the only thing I did not see coming. Um, you didn't see that coming. My but the uh, gripe was like, and you know, obviously I hate to be negative, but like I just want to throw this one out there. I really thought they could have done away with the whole Ralph concept. Owner. Yeah, like all of that and the Pietro fan service and all of that fakeness, like they could have removed that out. And things would have been a little bit more better. I think a lot of fans are pat- pissed off about that too um, because of the fact of who he was and where he came from and, you know, coming. It's to definitely throw you in a loop. Yeah. Because like, if they gave you exactly what you wanted, it would, everything would become And that, more you know what, it's funny you bring that up. That is the, that is the director's exact words. We gave you yeah. exactly what you wanted, but the outcome was not going to be what you wanted. Well, yeah, for me, like I was you... like, I haven't been this disappointed since uh, was it Trevor Slattery as the uh, fake Mandarin? Oh yeah, dude, that was pretty bullshit. I'm and glad I'm we're like, finally getting the real Mandarin. And I was like, well, right, yeah, like I'm I'm glad that we're we're clearing that up right now. But like for me, I was just like, once I. Once we knew the answers to these questions and stuff like that, or some of them, I was just like, well, I really wouldn't have wanted that actor in the series at all. Right. You know? Like we, like we could have just went without it and everything would have been fine, you know, a little bit better. But like, they were like, Oh, there's so-and-so from Fox's properties, X-Men and American horror story. Let's throw him in. <laughs> but yeah, that- I- that, I mean, I, I prepared my other buddies last week. I was like, listen, you guys are probably some, expecting something big from Evan Peters. I didn't even know anything. I was like, you guys are probably going to expect something big from Evan Peters. I was like, best thing, go in with the least amount of expectations because I guarantee you Marvel's going to throw you a curveball and he's not going to be who they say he's supposed to be. And right. they all, like we did the show today, they were all like, oh, I'm so pissed. I'm like, what did I tell you last week? Go in with the least amount of expectations on his character because he's probably going to be someone you are not expecting to be. Um, whether that would have been good or bad, uh, in this case it was bad. Um, I mean, I'll give it to him though. I mean, the, the few episodes he was on and he did some acting, which was basically like one whole episode. Um, it was a funny episode. An episode and a quarter. Yeah, episode and like a little clips here and there from other episodes that made up not even 15 minutes of a regular episode. Um, he was pretty good, though, on, on, on some of the stuff he did, and he was funny. I, I'm personally a fan of his. Um, American Horror Story is great, um, not just because of him, but just because so many talent on that show. But uh, he's one thing I look forward to seeing on that show. And uh, I really I, – I thought he was a really good Quicksilver. Um he he was funny and kick ass the first one. Uh, so. yeah, I loved him in um, as the Quicksilver for um, Fox. Yeah, I liked him better than I like okay. Quicksilver in Marvel Universe. Nah, I feel that. I feel that. I, I liked his humor and like just the way he was. I was like, I can relate to that character. I liked uh, what was it? His like rock and roll like shirts and stuff like that that he had. Yeah. Had. In my head, I was like. I was like, man, it would have been cool if he met Tony Stark because he was all about Pink Floyd and like Tony Stark was all about Black Sabbath and everything and like they would get in these like arguments or something. Yeah, Sweet Dreams was like one of the songs in freaking uh, what was it? Days of Futures Past or no uh, Apocalypse? Yeah. Um, that one was dope. Yeah, I mean all of the scenes. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I don't like the the actor at all because I I love the actor. Yeah, but um. I just, it was just one of those like happy moments where like once he got into the front door and he was there and he was a part of the universe and stuff like that, I was like, oh my gosh, here we go. we're, 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 you know, we're opening up the door. Everything is good. We're, we're getting one mutant in, you know, like the, the foot is in, you know, and everything. And I'm like, all right, cool. Let's go. Let's do this. Um, and the fact when like he just became a nothing. Yeah, it was just like, Ugh. kind of felt cheated. Like yeah. you, you, you've done this game before with uh, Mandalorian, or not Mandalorian, uh, um, with uh, why am I, why am I drawing a blank? Uh, with Mandarin. Oh yeah, 
mm. like you did this you, you gave us someone that was nothing and then you had to re-retcon what you did yeah. because everybody was pissed off yeah man it, it's gonna be an interesting uh future ahead of us in the mcu obviously because the next project that we can start from beginning to end uh together is the falcon and the winter soldier um one that i am very excited for uh i do very much like both of these characters the arcs have grown uh ever since they've both been uh one reintroduced and one introduced in uh, winter soldier um love these characters chemistry on screen it's hilarious um and they uh they do a lot of fun Henry calendars sorry I'm, I'm waving i was like who are you waving at and then i see a face in the corner <laughs> uh, see a little head right there yeah so i i uh <laughs> i do like these <laughs> you better be drinking a pink lemonade dr pepper <laughs> you go to in and out it's like going to Taco Bell not getting Baja Blast alright we'll leave it at that <laughs> um, you got a point you got a point yeah uh, but like you know Falcon Winter Soldier I like Baja Blast I like the icy one though I said I do like Baja Blast but the icy one the freeze oh yeah I couldn't think of the name Taco Bell sponsor us um <laughs> I'm so pissed off they took out took away the beefy nacho griller. That was a Better my yet, favorite item though. Sponsor the the QMDH slider team. That'd be cool to get a sponsor. <laughs> It'd be Taco Bell too, man. Would you be like a little credit card we, just all you can We would have slow sliders. If we actually got sponsored oh, by that, Taco that Bell. That would smell like fucking ass. We, it'd be it greasy. Really it would be greasy nastiness. It's okay, we'll be man. walking around hot, just regular tooting. Just it would go funnier, huh? Um, I'll be having the diaper on me at all times. <laughs> and then we have to use those porta potties too. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a classy person. I use ice hall bathroom. I don't. I don't use porta potty bathrooms. Forget y'all. I do. But you I don't know who you're talking to. I don't have a I don't, choice. I don't use a porta potty. I don't have a choice. All right, shut up, management. No, anybody can use X Hall. I, uh, <laughs> I go in there, but the moment I go in there, I'm just like instant sweaty. Cause it's just like so I, 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 I don't know. It's just me. Like I, I refuse to use haunt porta potties. I only go in there to take a piss. I, I use X Hall bathrooms. Hey, you know what? That's a good segue. You know, this is Haunter's mm. talk. We talk about everything, and. uh <laughs> HHN 30, man, is happening, and Beetlejuice is coming. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm stoked for that. I'm taking the trip, man. I'm going. I'm going. Dude, like, I saw their mini video of the mini maze last year. Right. That they had, like, what was it, the last week, I think it was? Like, where it was, like, a fan uh, pass mm -hmm. holder thing. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, to see that on a bigger scale, I think it's going to look freaking cool, and I hope it's not the same. Thing as it was before but it looked really cool just don't be disappointed if it is I think they would tweak one maybe two major things but that's it um, also good news here in California uh, theme parks can start opening April 1st which is usually that, that doesn't mean they're all going to open on April 1st but they are given the date April 1st if they are ready they are good to go as long as their thing is in the what, right? Was it red tier or something? Yeah. Purple, I think, right? Purple. Or no, purple's sort of bad. Thing. I think purple is bad. I think we're supposed to be in red. Red's bad. Why would you put purple as bad? Red's bad. I, I don't know. Red's bad. Red's the worst. I know. Um, I know. I just no. Stay, 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 stay but, home. Though. Stay home. But like, uh, I'm 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 gonna take a, a longer hiatus after thing parks open, so. I'm not exactly running to the lines to get into a, a theme park at the moment. What if you get? What, are you gonna get? Are you gonna get a vaccine? Mm -hmm. Are you getting the vaccine or no? Well, uh, hopefully when it's available to me. Like I, I, I plan on getting it. I, apparently, since I work in education, I can get one now. So, but right now it's not available for me yet. So I have to wait it out, like with the general public. 
Maybe, but dude. If if it's gonna be if it's gonna take longer than April first, because I know Bree wants to go to the parks, and I know she wants to do all the um, the, the Disney things with Jack and everything. And of course, like we gotta take Jack to the parts uh, of the Caribbean, right? Because that's where he's named from. Um, but like, I really want to go to Disney, but I feel that it's like not safe just yet. So. Go with, I, go with I, me to Florida. I'm going in June. It's, it's even worse <laughs> over there. Huh? Our girl just went over there August. That's she went over in mean. August. You can't park cop. You can only go to one park per day. And from there, everything is like social distancing. They're all respecting the rules. You don't wear your mask, you get kicked out. They, uh, I project that even though they have that April 1st opening date here in California, most parks uh, won't open till either late April or early May. And I think here's, here's the order in specific I think it's going to open. Knots and Six Flags I think will be first because well, yeah. all their rides are pretty they much out and I don't care. yeah they got well they got the they got apparently they both got their protocols down all the rides are outdoors so like they can pretty much run the entire park um so knots and six flags will be first followed by disney because i feel like they've been preparing this entire time as well um it's just a matter of i guess with indoor rides you gotta follow certain restrictions and guidelines uh so I believe with Disney, they're going to probably see if they follow said guidelines because the majority of their park is indoor rides. Um, and then if they get the okay, they'll be the next. And I think Universal will be the last. I want Universal to open up so I can go on the Secret Life of Pets ride that I've been waiting for going on three years. <laughs> it was supposed to open up two years ago. <laughs> I just uh, I wish they would bring back Terminator. But. Ooh, yeah. I wish they would just take Springfield out and bring back uh, Back to the Future. Back to the Future because uh, yeah. that was that was a fun ride. I'm excited for the Mario Kart land. I'm yes. excited for that. Oh, Nintendo, yeah. Which will probably make me do a, a motivational uh, lose weight challenge, so I can actually fit on <laughs> Mario Kart. A cart. <laughs> Um, no, but I, I think it's it's all good, man. Um, I'm as you guys know here on the channel, I cover the haunts. You know, I, I do a lot of uh, video time. Usually, I'm really active when haunt season's here, uh, and I'm looking towards the future as as a lot of these big haunts opening up. Um, now, and there's here's another theory about this. Now, I think if major haunts stop start opening up with theme parks being open, I feel that. The events will probably not be as big as they were. I would say, like, if Horror Nights were to do something, it would only be maybe max five mazes at that 15% capacity. If Knots were to do something, maybe they do half of their, like, 12 or 11 that they have. Um, or 13. So, like, uh... It's still hard to say because you're still within really close quarters. Right. But when you're in the maze, Universal figured really... that problem out last year with yeah. the plexiglass, and it worked. Yeah. Obviously, it you know kind of ruins some of the scare, but if you use the plexiglass to your advantage, you can make it work. Like I think uh, what they're gonna do is they're gonna finally take away the uh, cloth touching faces. Right. Which is gonna be a great advantage because I think that's one of my things that like that piece that I'm not a big fan of. Not because I'm scared of it and it feels like spider webs and i'm like oh this is scary for me i'm just like i'm tired of just walking through like feeling like a car going through a car wash you know right. <laughs> i'm like i'm like just just give us a hallway just That's give us the hallway man you can make it dark i don't care so just get this crap out of my face <laughs> that begs the question now with theme parks being able to open at 15 percent, obviously the haunt you two work at is not a theme park it's a hotel basically a historical landmark um what do you think the possibility is for dark harbor this year hoping i mean this is just me just like, like, you can just throw out your theories or your maybe what you could see happening i mean i'm i'm 
I know they make the money with the hotel. Right. So I'm hoping that they get a chance to at least open that and they can open, you know, a portion of that. Um, maybe if they did it more where we're mostly on the ship. Um, or I don't know. You know, like it's hard to say because like we have really great mazes that are on the outside footprint. Right. And that makes everything open and nothing is closed in, you know. Um, but I feel it's easier to clean if it's on the inside of the ship. But you know, if if they open up, they open up and you know, if they don't again, I totally understand. But if they don't, I'm I'm definitely gonna be going to a one of our sisters or brother uh, uh, haunted areas and gonna go play over there. So what about I, I remember they had plans to build like dining and everything in front of the ship where Dark Harbor usually sets up. Oh, that's a uh, Queens Island. They, Is that they scrapped? Are talking about it? Um, but I mean, that was like what they were gonna do was like they were gonna build um, what was it the uh, shipping area on the right hand side? You know, like all the sea containers and stuff. Right. <clears throat> all of that was gonna move over to San Pedro uh, Harbor. And um, what they were going to do was, like, they were going to basically make, uh, like, the block yeah. out in front, like, almost like a downtown Disney-type thing. They still say that they're going to do it, but via COVID, who who knows what's going to happen right now. Yeah. There was, like, there was like what was it, 10-foot to 11-foot tall rock walls and stuff like that. Like, they were going to have huge outdoor stuff going on. Yeah, man. So I'm looking forward to seeing what haunts open this year. Um, if there will be any returning drive-through um, home haunts, or uh, a lot of people are going to try to go through the, a lot of home haunts are they going to try to go through the uh, trial of building a maze this year? I know uh, our friends over at Pirates Cave already started construction on their 2021 haunt. Um, dude, I'm so bummed I missed that one. I really wanted to dude, see. Dude, if you liked Pirates of the Caribbean, which I know you guys do. I mean, everybody was sending me links. It and is, I was just like, I can't go. <laughs> like, yeah, it is the best. Uh, at that time, what was it? Jack was born September 1st. Right. It was like right around the corner, and I was just like, dude, we're so freaking tired. You're like, we're in full parent <laughs> mode. We just don't have the time right now, man. Yeah. No, nah, I feel that. Um, I'm hoping maybe one day they'll bring it back, but it looked like it was a one-year thing mm-hmm. unless COVID – gets worse which i'm knocking on wood that it doesn't because i don't want it to um but yeah that was something that was i've never that was theme park quality at a home like that was that good yeah i was out like a lot of people were like dude you missed out sparrow you have to go check it out and i was just like pick me up take me but i'm not driving i'm tired (laughs) (laughs) i was like no man if i would have known i would have picked you up myself let's go uh, me and the me and the missus, we were like we were dead tired during October. Like we were we were trying our best to do like some of the events here and there. And I mean, I remember like one of the we only went through like, six uh, the seventeenth door, and that was it. Yeah, well, we went to seventeenth, and we did like the cauldron, and that was like that was like the two things that we did that like that month. We're like we're done, we're tired. <laughs> like we'll do all the the cool stuff next year. Yeah, man. Yeah, we got fucked up on. Over there at the cauldron. That was fun. It's gonna, it's gonna be uh, interesting. It was good. <laughs> it's gonna be interesting to see what this year holds for us, man. It's looking good. Um, but the next time, oh, you... but before I sign off, um, cause I gotta sign off soon. Yeah, well, um, I was gonna wrap it up right now too. So you're good. I think the next one that we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the Justice League, right? Because that one's right around the corner. Sure, you yeah. Let's do that. Because <laughs> I know you want to talk with uh, with Bree about that. And we, we, we well, can, uh, hold on. That's not next week though. I think we have like two weeks, right? The eighteenth or something. Two weeks. So I mean, next week we got to figure out something to talk about. I don't know. Either that, or take a a break until Justice League. Break till Justice League, and then break. Till- <laughs> It's going to be a hard one. We might have to record back-to-back episodes on that one, man. A Justice League. You're going to need one podcast just for Justice League. You're going to need one podcast just for Falcon Winter Soldier. Oh, yeah. Well, I still haven't seen, what, Endgame? Where are we going to do a live? You still need to come over to my house, dum-dum. And we need to at my house as a date. 
You tell Mary Ellen right now. I can tell you in two Saturdays I'm booked because of both, because I'm going to watch the Snyder Cut. And that's already four hours of my day, so. Oh, yeah, we're going to watch that. I think we're, like, we might, like, watch it right at midnight with the little man. And You are nuts. You're going to be up to about 4.35 in the morning. Yeah. The only reason so, I say that is because it's going to be four hours of film and maybe an hour, an hour and a half of just breaking it down <laughs> in your head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What we're going to have to do you know for the end game, the three of us sitting on the couch, a camera right underneath the TV, just filming us as we're eating the popcorn watching the movie. I can live stream it. I was just saying so could give, I like the old school popcorn where you get the, the pan and you stir it and it just pops up in the big metal ball. I never had that. Oh, the Jiffy Pop? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty, guys. Never had that Love one? y'all, but I got to have a Mike, it's been good. I'll see you guys. I'll see you next week. As for the for rest sure. of you guys, hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast. If you guys did, hit that like button with that subscribe button and that bell notification be where every time we put up a new video. Tune in next week to Haunters Talk. We might talk about something. We might not even do an episode. Who knows? Um, but until Stay then, tuned. we'll see you guys real soon.